Okay, so I'll give you a quick quick overview of war, how this extruder works, or how a extruder should work, um, and the problems that you probably will encounter uh, if you want to build something like this for yourself. So first of all, we've got electronics. I won't go too much in detail there, but um, essentially we've got two PID controllers to co uh, control the temperature. We've got a speed controller in there as well to control the speed of a motor. I'll quickly explain that in a little bit more detail, and just a display to display the speed as well. So basic electronic stuff. Um, then essentially we've got a nice big motor connected with a coupler. Uh, inside there is a big thrust bearing as well to make sure uh, it can handle the load. Um, so that's the first part. So that will rotate, this motor rotates according to the speed set over here. Then essentially we've got an extrusion screw which is basically a big, uh, well just a big drill bit if I can call it that, just a fancy one. Um, and then attached to that we've got uh, two temperature, um, what do you call this, uh, t -t 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 uh, ceramic uh, band heaters that we've got over here and then temperature sensors in there as well. Um, now that feeds, this feeds back into a PID controller, so one for each band heater. Then, um, you know, we can control and set the temperature on them and uh, yeah, that's basically the goal of that side. Now, so that's well fairly straightforward. Now, when the next part, the challenging part comes out, this <laughs> what happens after that. So, the first thing is you need to, I'll just explain, you need to cool this filament that comes out. I mean, you'll push out a filament, or it will come out a little bit thicker than the diameter of that hole that you see over there. That's about 1.5, so it will, yeah, it will come out about 1.75. But that's at quite a slow speed. So if you push it up, it will, um, you know, you, you get different effects. So we've actually got a different size size head on over there as well. Um, you don't really want to go with 1.5, not set. It depends really on the machine. But in any case, we've got a couple of heads that we're going to fit on there. So, um, or, well, what do you call it? Not a head, the nozzle, whatever you want to call it. So then after, after that, the filament effectively comes out, or plastic comes out. Now the goal is to, First of all, it needs to be cooled off so that you can handle it. If it doesn't cool off, it just well it sticks to everything. So first of all, you want to cool it off. Uh, then you want to pull it basically because let's let's say for example it comes out at two millimeter diameter, you want to pull it, uh, stretch it down to 1.75 or whatever your intended uh, diameter is. So we'll stretch it by using some sort of cooler system. So I'll. Well, I'll explain that now. I've to do a couple of tests on that side, but you'll effectively pull the filament and then you need to roll it up. So we've got a rolling roller system. It's not being shown here, but um, let's see. So for example, now to cool it down, you've got a couple of options. The uh, most commonly one, a commonly used one is to use a water bath. So there will be water in here, water flowing through. Um, that's quite commonly used. You might think you don't want to use PLA, mix it with water, but that's what they do in the, in the factories. Um, you know, I've actually got huge uh, water baths, not small ones like I've got over here. But so that's one way. That's one way of uh, cooling it. The next way, the next possible way, which is not really used that often, is to just simply use a, to use a fan. Um, you know, they are very, so like I said, they're big, well, the big reason why you don't want to use a fan is because it deforms it. You know, for example, if you just blow it on the one side, it cools it off on that side more than or the top side, and it deforms a little, warps a little bit. You know, so it, and if you blow it too hard, it actually blows it away. You know, so it kind of lifts it up and deforms it in that way as well. So therefore, what I do usually is to take a water bath, let it run through water, so it cools down uniformly through that water, or fairly uniformly, and then gets pulled, you know, as soon as it hardens up, then basically you'll have a puller system. So, you know, in terms of cooling, a couple of, couple of things that I want to test. You know, this, like I said, this is probably the best way to go about, but you know, the issue here is the plastic currently, if this is PLA, if PLA sticks to other PLA, uh, yeah, we'll probably put some sort of um, coating over there and on this side as well. But yeah, just to mention, that's one of the issues of just putting that water bath right away. It fits perfectly. So, I mean, I've got one. So, the issue here is if that filament comes out, you need to grab it and pull it all the way. I want, but once it comes out of there and it touches that bit of filament, it kind of sticks to that. So, the thing is, if it's water, it doesn't stick to that, but then it's already like a blob. It's just super hard to work with this guy, right? So, then I've got the smaller one that. Well, it works a little bit better, 
but the thing is now it makes like a hyperbolic loop type of uh, um, scenario where the filament comes out it kind of falls down it only over let's say at this point it touches the water the puller will lift it up again so it touches the water and makes like a loop and comes out back out which it shouldn't do either so you know that sense of fans would work nicer if i 3d print the little part that sits over here could work nice but you know it's uh testing that needs to be done so it's a, it's a cooling part of it then the next is the puller puller system so first of all um you know we des i designed this little little guy over here um nothing too fancy but so it's got you know and i won't explain too much basic puller system but the issue is this is once again this is all made out of PLA, which is doesn't have a lot of grip and is quite brittle um, so I mean I've got bearings in there and little springs to tighten it up if this thing needs to go up and down but it has a tendency to break quite easily uh, instead of staying up. so next thing that we did was to try and cast uh, you know make like a, a elastomer coating around it you know cast it this was quite many done unfortunately this failed a little bit and I don't think it's going to work that nicely it is a little bit more rubbery Definitely a lot more rubbery, but still a bit thin, and yeah, I mean, it can be cleaned up. Um, so, I mean, just to explain, that's a 3D printed part in it, and that polyurethane elastomer cast it over it. So, we made a mold, we actually 3D printed the mold, uh, made elastomer, uh, elastomer cast, and yeah, that's basically that process. But yeah, never got to actually put it in, I decided to throw it away. Main reason actually is this might have worked, but the motor is quite small, it tends to, well, it doesn't have a lot of torque. So I thought, look here, I'll switch out, switch out to a bigger motor. So that was a Nema 17, this is a Nema 23. So, and then I had to make a plan to get some rubber wheels, I wasn't going to struggle again, so I bought some of these wheels, added some springs just for in case, and um, yeah, it works, works fairly alright, I mean, I'll show you, uh, you know, so, oh, I can't clip with my, but okay, so the issue is, just if, you can, if I can show you this one again, I had these, um, things to keep it aligned, you know, to make sure it stays in the center, you know, it's quite easy, with this design being vertical. With this one being the other way around, I need to effectively get some way to hold it like this. You know, I'll probably free it and something like that. Just to mention, you know, it's probably gonna fall out the bottom or top quite easily with this mechanism. Um, and yeah, I'll probably need to reprint this and get it a little bit upwards. But okay, that should, that should be fine for it. Still need to test this one. This will be a test for today. Um, and then yeah, next up it's just the electronic controller for that car, which is you know, basically up down speed controller, um, display, <coughs> and a power adapter for it. So that's pretty much uh, everything in the system. I'll do another test where I turn this all on and let it run. And yeah, like I said, I've got my bag of um, uh, pellets uh, or granules or whatever you want to call it. But okay, the next challenge is actually to make sure the filament itself is um, all right quality i'll just grab some filament that i've printed proof before now i think is this tend to be quite brittle bends a little bit but breaks super easily so i've got an idea that has to do with uh, you know it pulled moisture and when i pushed it through a water bath and so forth um, yeah but that's something i need to sort maybe it's i need to get some something to mix with these granules um not sure but it's super brittle but okay that's the next a challenge after all of that is done. I guess you know I'll have to sort this out before I can get it onto the puller system because it's just going to go around that uh, let's say a spool and then it will just snap and uh, I won't be very happy with it. Um, so what's here left? Okay I'll explain the electronics a little bit maybe as well. Uh, there's a power supply uh, you know this is 12 volt power supply I think 20 amps uh, to power supply but I've got a fused system that goes only to 10 amps. So this thing all pulls more than 10 amps. So there's a fuse that will blow. Um, it does pull, get power from the mains electricity and very important to have fuse in there. Then, okay, obviously a PID system that I mentioned, they're connected to solid state relays, which are connected to, in turn to uh, circuit breakers. Once again, this is just a form of secure as a safety. Uh, they're 10 amps circuit breakers. So if these heaters pull more than 10 amps, any one of them, well, like I said, there's two things will shoot break, or probably just the first one of the two, but either the fuse, uh, the fuse over there, or the um, circuit breaker will switch off. Hopefully the circuit breaker, I can just turn back on. 
And so that's a, um, so that's a first bit of it. That then gets connected to, okay, so the power supply drives a stepper motor driver, which drives the actual stepper motor. And um, that's pretty much it in there. It's not, it's not too complicated. It looks quite rough. Um, you know, I'm happy with this. Makes it look neater. I should have done that or inside there while we still had a chance. But <laughs> when we open it up again, I'll do that. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'll replace this. This looks quite crappy. The reason why this looks so crappy is because, well, I was in a hurry to cut one of these open. And this was about actually under a vacuum in another project. And yeah, long story short, it's, it looks quite uh, horrendous. I'll make a new one, hopefully, before the next video. Um, so what what else is there? Uh, anything to speak about the granules? No, not, not really. Like I said, I just need to make sure I've actually got the right stuff. Oh, there's a couple of reasons why this could have gone faulty. I've got a big bag here that I need to test now. Um, this might, like I said, it's been standing like this quite open for quite a while. So, yeah, not sure what, what a fix that would 